Hey, what's up guys? I am really excited about this video, but I do need to preface a few things. This channel was never meant to be like a mentorship. It was never meant to be any kind of like teaching channel. It was really meant to just be a vlog for my own trading. Um, you know, trading is hard. It takes a long time. It can be a lonely journey. And I thought, you know, a lot of people could get a lot of insight from me just kind of documenting my journey. Um, I think, you know, one of my strong suits is I think I am a really good analyst in terms of these concepts. So I thought, you know, people could also kind of use kind of like, you know, get some information off of that, make videos about that. You know, it's a lot of stuff that I was, I was doing anyways. So I'll just document myself doing it. If people found info, uh, found a new value in it, they could get it. Um, but I do want to make this one video because I think it has so much value. Um, I wish that I, I'm going to, I wish I had this video when I started. There's a lot of things in this video that I didn't even know existed. Um, I didn't understand the pros and cons of certain things. And it, yeah, so we'll get into it. Um, let's start with trading styles. So you have to figure out what kind of trader you are going to be. Now, this is highly going to, this is going to be really dependent off your time schedule and your job. So if you are somebody who say works a retail job or you work construction, you work on a site and you can't really be in front of a computer, you're probably going to be in one of these two buckets right here, either long-term position trading or swing trading. And if you do have access to a computer, so like I was an engineer and I was usually sitting in front of a computer most days. So it was pretty easy for me to toggle between tabs, um, midday for as long as I wanted. So I'm grateful for that. But if you do have, if you are in a position similar to that, you will either be doing day trading, um, maybe scalping. I don't suggest scalping, but I'll go a little more in depth. So long-term position trading is, you know, six months to one year, maybe two years. But I think once you get past a year, you're really, it's kind of investing territory. Um, yeah. So you, but what you have to understand is with this, you are going to have a lot less setups. So you're going to probably be trading, placing, you know, two to three trades, like two, you're gonna be placing like two to three trades, maybe a year, um, you know, if you're doing it right. So understand that swing trading, I think, you know, if you're somebody who again, like you're working on a site, you could do swing trading and you could be placing like one, one to two trades every two weeks, um, which is a lot better. But again, the, the good thing about swing trading is say you can do all your markups and all your analysis and preparation outside of work at night. And then if, as long as you can pull your phone out, you know, for like 10 minutes at a day, you can kind of enter, you know, you, you make your whole plan outside of work and then you wait for, you can like, you know, some of these trading softwares will send you alerts when it hits a certain price. So you can, you know, set an alert for when it's at an area where you're supposed to buy, log on, hit the buy, make sure you set a SOP, and then you just don't look at it. Um, and you know, it's, ex it's expected that you're going to let that run for several days. So a lot of people that, you know, aren't in front of a computer can get into swing trading and then day trading. You're usually you're in and out the same day. Um, this is what we do on this channel. I also swing trade, but I just do, that's not in the scope of this channel. Um, day trading, you know, the benefit is you get a lot more executions. Again, you can execute every day. Um, it requires, you know, I don't know, I don't want to say less patience, but it, you can do a lot more in a shorter period of time. Scalping. I really don't suggest scalping. I think the, the the line between gambling and scalping is very thin. And 
if you're new to trading, you're gambling. If you're trying to scalp, um, I think you know really advanced traders that have a really good understanding of market technicals can scalp. But I think a lot of people end up scalping. What they're really doing is they're just trying to like buy momentum of price fluctuations and like exit the trade before it goes to against them and leave the trade when it is going in their favor. And I think that's just gambling. Um, so yeah, day trading, uh, I think it's definitely is what we do here. So again, um, if you want to get into trading, you have to figure out which one are you going to be and the strategy you use is going to be dependent on these styles. Now, in terms of smart money concepts, the, the concepts are the same on all time frames which is awesome because if you, you know, if you start learning swing trading and say you get pretty good at it, you're also working your way towards being able to, you know, translate that to day trading and vice versa. So smart money concepts is awesome because it really translates the time frames. But again, you know, the concepts are the same for all of them, but the strategy is going to be a little different depending on which one you choose. I, if I remember to put a link in this YouTube channel, I will, but ICT's core content month six is about swing trading. Um, great, great content in that month. Um, so you can kind of start off there. So first thing is figure out what kind of trader you're going to be. Next is things you can trade. Okay, so there's a lot here. And some of this again this is a very broad overview i'm making this video so you just know what's out there and then you can do your more do your own research later on and dig more deeper into those things i just want everyone to know it's out there because when i started i started trading options i didn't know futures were even a thing um and i didn't know the pros and cons and i didn't know that you know as a beginner trader i was really swimming upstream while I was using options and it made the trading journey a lot more difficult because of the Greeks. Um, we'll get into that though. So shares, shares is, you know, I think it's the most simple one that people can understand. You're, tr you're buying an asset. So you're buying, you know, shares on a company you buy, for example, let's say shares of Amazon. Um, the pro is no Greeks. So it makes it a lot more simple low financial barrier to entry and i say that because i think the share price of amazon right now is like around 135 so you just need 135 dollars to buy one share the con is slow equity growth so if say you buy one share of amazon and you know you're learning technicals you're learning trading concepts and you take a trade and it goes from 130 to 135 you know, you could, it's awesome if you executed a beautiful trade, and then, but you made $5. And you know, let's be honest, like the reason we're doing this is to make money. So that's not too exciting, um, $5. And I think, you know, if you're not this person, that's awesome. Stay this way. But a lot of us, we let the fact of like whether it's a lot of money or not a lot of money influence you know how we move forward and what we trade so because sometimes it's hard to make a lot of money quickly a lot of new traders trade options and remember if you can make money quick a lot of money quickly you can lose just as much money just as fast so understand that anything in your head where you're like, Ooh, I can make more money doing this. It's, it's not an asymmetric risk to reward. Um, you can lose just as much money just as quickly. Um, but options again are similar. They have a low financial barrier. Oh, let me get back into shares. Actually, there's some stuff I want to say. Shares don't expire. You don't have to worry about um, them expiring. Uh, and what was I going to say? Shares don't expire. Anyway, I'll, if I remember, I'll get back to it. Um, options, low financial barrier. So 
options are really tricky um if you do decide to go the options route it's very it's a very deep rabbit hole i don't want to get too into it now um a lot of people trade options because you can buy options contracts for cheap but again the greeks so the greeks the way i describe it for a new trader is like swimming upstream it makes it's a whole it's like you not only do you have to understand like the technical and your strategy but there's time there's a time element factored into that which isn't there in futures so you have to be right on what's going to happen and you have to be right on the timing of when it happens because of the greeks and that's what makes options like swimming upstream now you can buy options that uh, expire way further out and the problem is the further out the expiration the more expensive they are now the further out the expiration the less the greeks will hurt you but again in my opinion if you are putting up the money to buy those further out expiry options you might as well put the money into futures and yeah but a lot of people a lot of people you know will be buying like zero dtes one dte five dte and that can be really dangerous because you need to understand that when you buy those shorter immediate expiries if say you buy a con an options contract and the price of the asset is a hundred dollars say it moves to 102 you had you know x amount of gain in your contract price but you think it's going to go to 103 and remember the market doesn't move in a straight line so say it pulls back to 101 you still think it's going to go to 103 all the technicals say it's going to go to 103 but depending on how much time passed and you know what contract you bought and what time of the day it is that option price although you bought it 100 and it's still at 101 you could be losing money you could be underwater because of the greeks and now it's that whole element of you have to not only get the technicals right you have to get the timing right and then say you're really convinced but you're underwater you then have to battle the emotional problems of you know every minute that passes you could be like losing value um it's just a whole other element that makes trading a whole lot harder it's it really distracts you from you know the concepts and your trade um like your trade analytics and it just makes it a lot more like money driven and emotional and i really suggest honestly like i wish somebody like just told me like don't do that hey like don't do that that's not what we do here when i first started um so again it, it's it's really complicated with options because it yes it's a low financial barrier but those derivatives and vehicles that you're using that make it a low financial barrier are really working against you so at that oh another thing too is um yeah so options have multiple expiries um i'm not going to get too much into the greeks but you really have to know and understand them if you're going to trade options futures pros there's no greeks so it's not like you're swimming against the current i would describe it as you are swimming in still water but again you are learning how to swim so the cons with a high financial barrier so high financial barrier when you trade futures you are trading on margin again i i don't want to get too much into what margin is you're not trading with margin when you trade options but when you trade futures when and you trade with margin you could lose more money than you, you could end up owing you could lose more money than you have in the account which would result in you owing money options if you buy an option contract for say five hundred dollars and it goes the com say you want it goes a complete other way it goes completely against you the worst case that's going to happen is you lose five hundred dollars you can only go to zero futures if you're trading on margin say you have twelve hundred dollars or twelve thousand dollars in the account and you are somebody who is doing more gambling than trading and, and say you are trying to trade the cpi data with one futures contract and you don't use a stop loss because you're a psycho 
um, if that goes against you and it moves really far, really fast against you, you could say you have $12,000 in the account, you could end up owing $24,000. And you're like, it took me months to save up this $12,000 and now I owe 24. Like I don't have that money and it can be very risky. Again, if you are trading smart money concepts correctly and you are not gambling, you know, you shouldn't run into a scenario where that happens. But again, um, people still do it and it can be dangerous. Um, high financial barrier. So to start trading futures, you need what's called initial margin. So that can be anywhere from like 3% to 12% of the futures contract price, depending on the broker you use. So I think Thinkorswim, which is a platform I use, we'll get into platforms next. Um, Thinkorswim, I believe it's t about $12,300 for the initial margin to trade the E-mini S&P. Um, that, so that's for the e-mini S&P. Next, we'll get into micros. So micros are awesome. And I have this little window right here that it breaks it down. This window is from Charles Schwab, um, which owns Thinkorswim, the platform. Thinkorswim is the platform. Charles Schwab is the broker. So you really just move the decimal place over one and the problem is so on es if it moves five handles at 1250 per tick we get 20 250 dollars on the micro you get 25 dollars and again it's not as much money but it's not as much risk and it's a lower barrier to entry i really do suggest that you take time paper trading and learning smart money concepts and the strategy in general um, you know the more time you take to learn that and if you can prove you know like three months of profitability in a row um, paper trading then you can probably just jump straight to um, ES you know if you have that track record paper trading um, if you're really angsty again I know I used to be like this I, I just joined and I just started trading thinking I was going to be able to make money. I was one of those people. Um, you can start trading the micros. I think, you know, you can see some sketchy brokers out there that will trade. I think they're called nanos. Um, but again, those are usually more like sketchy brokers and they offer you like a lot of margin. And we'll get into that with Forex. But um, futures is awesome because that example I said about for options, if the asset price moves a dot like two dollars, but then pulls back one dollar, you could be at a loss still. Futures, it is whatever you price you buy it at. It is your profit or loss is strictly tied to like where the price moves based off of that initial buying price. Um, so it doesn't. There's no time element. There's no decay. There's no Greeks. And I think that makes it, you know, trading it just, again, like I said, I just, I describe it as options is trading against a current futures is trading in, or like swimming options is swimming against the current futures is swimming in still water. Um, again, you just have that financial barrier, higher financial barrier, um, which can be more difficult. Forex. So I don't really have too much experience trading Forex. Um, this is all stuff that I've just like s picked up as a trader. Um, people like it because it moves really fast. It trades 24 seven. The moves can be very large. Um, the cons are, you know, that it's like well known that spreads are a thing. So say you put your stop loss at a specific point, it's known that brokers can open up spreads to kind of tag your stop loss because you know they make more money if you are knocked out of a trade and have to place another trade um so the spreads can be kind of sketchy the brokers can be kind of sketchy i've seen some brokers that will give you like huge margin and again so they'll let you trade with like you can put 50 dollars in a sketchy offshore for um broker and they'll let you trade with like five hundred thousand dollars but again when you, it's it's dangerous because 
when you trade with margin, you could end up owing a lot of money. Um, so I just don't suggest you do that. <laughs> don't trade with sketchy, sketchy brokers. Um, and if you want to trade Forex, that's cool. Um, but I think, you know, futures, shares, and options, which are a lot more regulated, um, you can get to the same end goal. Next is platforms and brokers. So once you figure out your trading style and what kind of trader you're going to be, and then you figure out your trading vehicle, you would need to figure out who are you going to want trade with. So I started on Thinkorswim. I think it's good. Um, it was originally owned by TD Ameritrade. I think TD Ameritrade got bought by Charles Schwab. So, but it's, it's still working. It's still good. Um, there's also interactive brokers. That's another big name one. I've never used these ones. Um, I just know they're reputable names. AMP. I know ICT traded with AMP. Um, you know, none of them are really perfect. And Owanda, again, Owanda is like the broker and we could get into like, you know, the technicalities of like brokers, clearing houses. There's, there's a lot of back end, but, um, a lot of people that trade Forex trade with Owanda and the platform, the software they use is MetaTrader. So again, MetaTrader and Thinkorswim are like softwares. The brokers, the people that, you know, like actually clear the money and handle the money are, you know, it would be Owanda and Charles Schwab. Um, the one, so you see on this channel, I use TradingView. TradingView is just a charting software. You can connect brokers to TradingView. Um, I really suggest TradingView has a paper trading and Thinkorswim also has paper trading. Um, I think Meta, yeah, MetaTrader has paper trading. Um, the softwares usually have a paper trading aspect to them. Um, TradingView, I think, I think everyone, like almost everyone uses TradingView, it seems like. It's just the most user friendly. It's a really seamless experience. Um, and, you know, if you're going to study these, if you're going to become a trader, you're going to spend a lot of time in front of charts. And it's really just the most user friendly. And yeah, it, it's awesome. I, I, I just suggest you use it. It's very seamless. Um, I will say, you know, when I first downloaded Thinkorswim, it was very overwhelming. Um, I remember it, as you trade, you know, just don't give up. Over time, you'll get accustomed, you'll get used to things. And it's funny, you look back and you really get to realize how much progress you've made once you look back. Because I remember. I used to open up think or swim and just get so overwhelmed and i was like there's so much happening and it was like nervous i'd get like nervous to click buttons um and that become that you know that becomes jaded over time um and yeah so after you get the broker that's about it um let's go back to kind of just these again so I'm a little bit of a hypocrite here. I'm going to circle this all back to really just paper trade. I mean, I was somebody who got caught up in, I don't know if I said it at the beginning of the video, um, you know, I was trading options on like a trading discord group. And those are two things I just wouldn't suggest to anyone anymore. Um, you know, I didn't really find success in trading until I really fell in love with, you know, becoming an analyst, like the science behind trading, like like thinking of it as like a craft, like sharpening your craft and your trade, no pun intended. Um, and you know, the money comes with that, but if you're not viewing it in that lens of like, this is some kind of science that I need to figure out, then if you're not viewing it in that mindset, you're viewing it in the mindset of like, I just need to make money. And if you're viewing it in the mindset of like, I just need to make money, you're gonna be, it's so close to gambling. Like you're just gonna be so influenced by like losses and money and then it's again like i i traded for a while before i found ict and that's why i love his concepts so much because they're so in-depth i mean if you just go to his page i think you can watch his videos you can see that so I, what i really really suggest is just you know paper trade and fall in love with the concepts and understanding and being an analyst um, and it's going to take time. It, it will, it will take time. I don't think anybody, 
I think I don't I don't know if I've ever heard of somebody who just starts making money off of trading like immediately like yeah you can get some big wins where you make money but like you do it enough you give those back um so just and i mean if you're have a solid head on your shoulders and you understand that this is a journey that's going to take you know years you can probably agree that okay like i'll start off without money um if you do are someone who thinks you'll be the exception um I don't know. I hope you are. <laughs> I, I hope you are. Um, but yeah, most people, most people don't make money immediately. So it's better to take the time to paper trade. Um, and I think it'll really help separate yourself from being like a gambler and an analyst. Um, yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Again, you know, I, these are just kind of, this video was just kind of talking about like, what is common in the space so you can have the, the knowledge of doing your own research and looking more into that. Um, not, not any kind of financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. Um, I think you should paper trade. I think paper trade is amazing. Everyone should start paper trading until they can prove that they can be profitable for three months in a row. Um, yeah.